welcome to the TSG Multimedia video podcast for December 1st, 2011. This is John here with... Dan. As usual, and we're going to weather a podcast subscriber's boxcar. So I just wanted to mention a couple of things before we get started in earnest here. One... Don't forget to check out your local Heritage Railroad and see if they have any holiday trains going on. And I also have a special announcement to make. We are releasing for a very limited time the HO Scale Weathering and Detailing Videos Volumes 1 and 2 as a package deal with both discs in one pack. Yeah, it's a two DVD set with both discs in one uh, DVD case. Right. So you get both of the volumes in, in one. Right. And we're doing the same thing for the DCC installs video, which I've cleverly placed little graphics on the screen by now for that to show oh, what they are. Thanks. You can find these special offers if you go to the TSG Multimedia website and click on the podcast page. There's a little link there, and you can get in on these things. Now, they're only going to be offered for a very limited time, so if you want to get one, you better get on there and order it soon. Uh, maybe for someone for Christmas, who knows. Anyway, so let's go on to the video podcast here. And what do you have here, Dan? This is the boxcar that our subscriber sent in. Did you did you want to read the letter? or who, sure, it's who does pretty, this belong to? What's um, this here? is from Rob in Santa Cruz, California. Oh, a local person. Yeah. All right. And um, he wrote... Hey Dan, just wanted to thank the guys at TSG Multimedia for having this contest. I have really enjoyed listening to their podcasts, and I think it's really cool for them to do this. I have watched the TSG Weathering DVDs, and if this car turns out like any of those on the DVDs, I will be very happy. I'm excited to see when it's done. All right. So short and sweet, but... Short uh, and sweet, little flattery there. Yeah. Gets you, gets you somewhere, right? Yeah. So what are you going to do to it? I know you've done some stuff already. Yeah, we kind of um, talked about that on the audio podcast. This is an Atherin ready to roll Rio Grande box car. I found actual photographs of this very car, uh, 60936, that were taken in 1992, if the date is correct on them. And it shows the car with a roof walk and uh, still, which is kind of unusual. It also had crossover platforms and a brake platform. Uh, so all that is kind of unusual. It's kind of a neat car in that respect. So um, the stock model had molded on grab irons on the left side of the car looking at the side here. On the ends of the car I added details west cushion coupler pockets, KD58 couplers, and Plano uncoupling levers, and high-tech air hoses that are actually made of rubber so that they won't break off hopefully. I removed the cast on grab irons on the left side of the car looking at the side and repainted parts of the car and then I added ladders from my scrap box. And then I also added on the roof uh, Plano photo etched roof walk and then, of course, to the ends, the crossover platforms and the brake platform. And you can't see it, but inside the car, I added ha half an ounce of weight to bring the total weight up to 5.2 ounces, which is a little bit over the NMRA recommendation, but I, I kind of like my cars a little heavier because I think they track better. So I uh, probably couldn't pull as many of them up a big hill, but that's just an excuse to run more diesel, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little extra power on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't mind that. Did you ask? So, did you ask this person if he has enough power to pull this thing? Well, I think yeah. He said it was fine. <laughs> he could tow it with his car yeah. or something, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, that's pretty much it as far as detailing goes. So now we can get to the weathering part. Okay. So the first thing I usually like to start with on a car are the wheels, because to me, nothing makes a car look toy-like more than having shiny metal wheels. So. Um, I'm just going to take some polyscale railroad type brown paint on a brush and I'm just going to put it on the wheel face and then spin the wheel and just coat the whole thing. And that'll should usually keeps it off the wheel tread and I'm I'm not jamming it way up in there so I'm not going to get any paint in the wheel bearing either. So we're just going to do that to all the all the fronts of the wheels then. Yeah, and I usually I will do the back side too. Now I'm going to dry brush the wheels and trucks with a little bit of light gray paint. This is really just to, as I recall, this is just to sort of to bring the detail out in the exactly. springs and stuff. Exactly, exactly. And I kind of spin yeah. the wheels a little as I do this. And what I'm trying to do is put a little bit of light gray on the wheel rims. 
Yeah, it's funny when you do that, you can really it makes the those little raised sections of the truck and the wheels really pop out better. Yeah, and that's the whole point is yeah. to just make it kind of pop a little bit because usually you see the rims on a real train. I'm going to do that same dry brush technique on a coupler a little bit. Yeah, it's worth noting for the viewers here that uh, we're just going to be taping the initial. You know, the first time Dan does something like, and then we're going to do the rest of it off camera. You don't need to show each one because we're trying to keep the length of the podcast uh, to a, a reasonable length. So. Yeah. But, uh, one yeah. thing I want to mention is I'm being really careful right now because I've got all these details put on here and I don't want to knock them off with the brush. So I'm, I'm just doing this very carefully. I like to layer the weathering because on a real train, you see the, um, you know, the effects of time. Whereas, you know, dirt builds up over time and from different places. So I think with you, I mean, if you layer stuff on, it makes it look more realistic than just like doing everything one color. Right. So now I'm going to take some weathering powder. This is just a dark brown, and I'm going to put it in the wheel faces and just kind of spin it around. I'm using a little micro brush. You know, what's funny about that is that it already looked really good. But when you do that, it really, it just makes it look even better, you know? Yeah. So. And as far as like painting the wheels, I used a, a brown color, but you could also use a gray. It doesn't really matter what the color is because it, 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 real train wheels end up being sort of this nondescript dirt color. I mean, if you look at them really closely, they're actually not all one color. They're, they're you know, kind of a mix of different things. You see little bits of brown and gray and, yeah. you know, grime. So it that's like kind of what the, what the technique I'm doing here kind of simulates. <laughs> It looks like real train wheels look like something you just wouldn't want to rub up against, you yeah. know, by accident, because you would just get so dirty. And now I'm going to put a little bit of dark rust, just for a little variety. That that gives it a little more variation. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I'm going to use some of those same colors on on the micro brush, and I'm going to just highlight some of the areas on the truck, like the springs, just going over them a little bit, give them a little color, and yeah. the What's the again, wheel bearings. That really does, God, I mean, it just really pops with those. Well, you know, the thing I've noticed on real equipment, and this is true of just about any equipment that's out in real weather, is that most things are never all one color. You know, especially if they have different parts, each part is like a slightly different color sometimes. Sure. So if you do that, it's subtle, but it makes it look really uh, more realistic and convincing. Yeah, you know, what's funny about, about this, in this particular case, is that it has all these little parts, and I don't even realize, uh, until I'm looking at it now, that these little popping parts were part of the mold in the first place, because you can't really see it until it is a different color, you know? Yeah. So. You can even put some little discoloration. One thing I did do that I forgot to mention before is I sprayed the entire car with dull coat, including the trucks, which yeah. is a good base for putting powder on. It makes everything stick better, doesn't it? Yeah, because the trucks are just bare plastic otherwise, and, and trying to get anything to adhere to them is pretty difficult. Yeah. So the dull coat helps. Uh, now I'm going to move on to the roof for the time being. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of a wash. What I'm doing is, um, first I'm just putting on some odorless mineral spirits with just a hint of black in it. This is very subtle. I remember this from the detailing video. This also makes the detail pop. Yeah, this is basically one of the things I've seen some people do when they do a wash is they put it on and it's too heavy. Yeah. This is an extremely thin wash. You can barely see it. Um, but it will, it will bring out the detail a little bit. And then while the thinner is wet, I'm going to take some white oil paint, just a very minuscule amount, and just kind of Oh, got this, it is, in there. this is the oxidation on the top of the... Yeah, this is like yeah. very subtle, but um, my experience is that usually subtle is better when, when you want to make something look realistic. One of the things, see, because the thinner is already on there, the paint automatically sort of blends. Right, because it's thinning it out as it sets on, on right. the surface. I have a question for you. I don't know, I, I don't remember if you just mentioned it, but what... What's the actual color? Is that like titanium white, or this is titanium white. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This I think is you use that same color on on some of the other. 
Yeah, these the CCC are, videos. These are, um, I should mention that these are artist oil paints. Yeah. Um, which you could get at a craft store or um, an art supply store. Oh, I said DCC videos. I meant the weathering and detailing videos. Yeah, the weathering and detailing for the rolling stock, yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm going to do a wash technique on the side of the car, too. And I didn't glue these ladders on for a reason, so I could take them off for this step. What's this now? This is to make it look dirtier on the side? Or? Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, yeah. Look at that. Sorry, it's going to... The, the slight amount of black that's already in the wash is going to help pick out some detail. Yeah, I can see rivets where I did not see them before. Yeah. That's what I was talking about before, how when you do this wash on these things, it totally makes things show up that you didn't otherwise see. Yeah, and then you know? um, I'm just kind of smearing it around right now. I'm trying to coat the entire side is what I'm doing with and get it wet with thinner. Okay. What's the purpose for getting it? The, the entire side wet with thinner, is that because you're going to put some, some blobs and streak it? or what, what Yeah, you I'm going to do some streaking, and the streaking will blend better. Oh, you're going to do some streaking on the podcast? Not that kind of streaking. Oh, okay. I was getting concerned for a minute there. Yeah, no, this is a family show. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's why I was concerned. Yeah. Um, anyway, and now I'm going to take some, um, again, artist oil paint. This is some raw umber which is kind of a light brown color, and I'm just going to do a little... This looks kind of not so good when you first do it, but... Yeah, it looks all chunky right now. Yeah, but the idea is you take the brush and blend it. Oh, yeah, like it rained and it was yeah. dirty and stuff. Because in the photos I have of the real car, it's actually pretty severely streaked. So you want to just kind of draw these down across the side of the car as if rainwater was drawing dirt down. Yeah, it definitely you, looks like it. Yeah, and you want to try to keep the strokes as vertical as possible because obviously most of the time the water is going to go straight down the side. Okay, so one thing in the photos that I've seen is there's a discolored area to one side of the door on the car. And I'm going to do that with an airbrush. Um, I don't want to put tape on the car though at this point because I'm afraid it might peel off the streaking that I've done. So I'm just, I just made this paper mask. I'm just going to... Uh, now I'm going to airbrush some thinned out polyscale earth onto the sides of the car. Oh, dusting. Dusting, yeah. And yeah. while I do this, I'm going to roll the car back and forth so I don't imprint the wheels. With Otherwise you get a shadow of the side frames on the wheels. So just like do this and then... You try to put more on the bottom too because the dust will tend to stick to the bottom of the car more. Yeah, while you're doing the other side, I want to mention something too that... Uh... That since people also. didn't, yeah, you know, people didn't get to see this. Uh, it, it may be worth noting that Dan sprayed sprayed this with some dull coat in between the last step and this step, just so that stuff would stick a little better. Yeah, well, I also wanted to protect um, the the paint from any subsequent steps of things that I'm going to be doing. Yeah, it's all about layers, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and do the end of the car too, uh, a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to start in with some powder, and what I've got here is some dark brown uh, weathering powder, and I'm just using a big soft brush. Is this more for, like, dirt effect, or what? Yeah, this is to... I already put some streaks on it with the oil paint, but now I'm going to add a little more discoloration with the powder, and this also will help to blend it in with the, with, you know, the blend the streaking a little bit. You always have to remember, even if the real car is, is extremely dirty, Sometimes it's better to weather the model a little bit less dirty because on a layout it's not going to look the same as a, a full-size train will out in the sun. So you, know, you got to kind of take those things into account a little bit. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to take some black on a micro brush and I'm going to go over the seams a little bit. Oh, I remember this from the weathering video the yeah. DVD that showing up, making the seams show up more. Yeah. Yeah. And this may look a little a little heavy at first, but I'm going to blend it together later. I'm going to put a little bit on the top as well. And a little bit on this seam right here. Then, <laughs> This is a brush I keep just for blending. It, it doesn't have any other color on it. It's just a clean brush. And just blend it a little. It helps to make it a little more subtle. Yeah, that's nice though. 
you can see it's a lot different from the other side, which is... Yeah, uh, you can even blend it this way. Kind of helps to spread it around. And the tack board is usually, they're usually made of wood and they usually get kind of weathered and discolored separately from the side of the car. And it really makes it look like it's a separate part rather than just something that's molded onto the side. Yeah. So if you can't see the picture on the top, you just kind of have to guess, huh? Like what it might look like? Exactly, yeah. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any pictures of this particular type of car um, from the roof. Roof shots are generally pretty hard to get. Yeah, I mean, anyway. how, how would you get that? Usually people are trackside, which is, you know, and these things are, what, 20 feet tall about? Uh, yeah, 15, 16 anyway. And, and uh, you know, the only way to do it is if like, you're on a hill or on a bridge. Yeah, and the train's going it. under you or something like that. So When I say 20 feet, I'm thinking in, in terms of how far up the grade is, too, because railroad tracks usually are on top of a bunch of ballast and stuff. Right. And that can account for a few feet as well. So Right. Again, I'm using some powder and just kind of dabbing it here and there to make little rust spots. All right, so now I'm going to put a little rust-colored powder on the coupler. And I waited till after I sprayed it with the airbrush because it helps the uh, powder adhere better. Oh, having that light dusting? That yeah. That kind of makes sense. Get little particles on there, huh? Yeah, so I'm just using this this bright orange rust. You really kind of have to be careful with it because it, it's really kind of a powerful color and it's easy to get it to be too overwhelming. So <laughs> I'm just using it on the coupler itself. I'm going to take some uh, some of this dark brown and just go over it. Yeah, now it's just layered some more. And you know, yeah. the, the thing is though... Uh, see, that tones it down. Yeah, and, and the couplers do get nasty like that too. I remember seeing them. You never see a... Well, shouldn't say never, because you know, that's a strong word, but hardly ever see a clean coupler. Yeah, there you go. Okay, the fo in the photos, this car also has some uh, rust streaking on the side where I guess the door is scraped on the side of the car while it's been open. So uh, I'm just using a colored pencil. This is dark umber, and I'm just going to kind of draw it on. A little spot down here, and uh, another one over here. Yeah, see now this, this I guess is really where having pictures really comes in handy, because you can see, I mean you could use your imagination and it would probably turn out fine, but if you have a picture that shows you exactly what d actually happened to a real car. Yeah, it looks... It, generally, even if you're not copying the, the exact position of the, the little rust streak or whatever, just, just using a photo as a reference will give you a, generally a better job. Yeah, e even, you know. a, even any, any car for that matter. It wouldn't even have to be the same car. So Yeah, and then before I'm done with this, what you can also do, which is kind of neat, is to take the rust-colored powder and go over this just a little bit. Oh, I see. It's making it a little more uh, diffused. Yeah, because a lot of times when when there's a rust spot on a car, it tends to there's like a a real deep rust where the scratch is, and then around it there's like this little rust halo. Yeah, and that's what this kind of simulates. Yeah, that's definitely looking a lot more realistic on the side there. Again, with some of this uh, dark rust colored powder. Just kind of very subtle. It's subtle, but it looks better than not having it on there. So. Yeah, again, it's giving it more color, um, you know, more variety, because just having a little bit of variation generally makes it look older. Put some on the ladder rungs, too on the ladders. Did some drop off onto that photo e etched walkway thing? I think so. That's okay, yeah. actually. Looks pretty good. No, I was thinking it should be there. Yeah. Yeah. So the car's pretty much done. The last thing I like to do before I put the car in service is to clean the wheels because after you've done all this, you may have dull coat and powder and God knows what else on the wheel treads, and that's not uh, very good. It could spread a lot of crud around on your track. So I'm going to use my motor tool with a wire brush attachment and I'm going to run it at a really low speed because I don't want it to spin the wheel too fast because they might get hot and melt something. So I'm basically just dialing it down to as, about as low as I can go with 
and still have it spin. And then I'm just going to hold it at a slight angle so if, if you can see this, the, the, the brush is actually angled a little bit out from the wheel face so that I don't scrape any paint off the wheel face itself. And if you want to keep the wheel from spinning too fast, you can kind of use your thumb as a brake on the other side. And just scour that a little bit. All right, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing. Now, you've seen the, the thing from start to finish, as promised. Congratulations to Rob, who won the contest. And uh, let's just take one more look at it. It went from this undetailed, unweathered toy train car to this, which looks like it could be you know, running around someplace on a real train. And uh, if you like this detailed look at, you know, this podcast, a detailed look on how to do this stuff, you should really check out the detailing and weathering uh, videos that we have out. And I'll just make one more quick mention of the, the special that we have running for our podcast subscribers. Go to the website, tsgmultimedia.com, click on the podcast link, and look for the special link that goes to the, I guess, what are they, holiday specials, I guess, aren't they? Um, yeah, so. All right, so anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in or clicking in or whatever, and we will see you on the video podcast next year. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks.